Greetings traders and welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. Chris here bringing you another in-depth with Chris episode. Today we're going to be covering the subject of the Dow Jones. And this will be an introduction into the Dow Jones, mind you. We will discuss where the Dow Jones came from and how it pertains to us as futures traders today. We're going to cover all of that and more. But before we get going, let's talk about how we can apply the Dow Jones to our Finamark platform here. That way you can follow along as well. Now, if you are unaware, there are multiple contract options for the Dow Jones. I'm going to show you how we can apply the mini version because I'm biased and it's my personal favorite. Now, to do that, we're going to go up here to the top left, give our symbol finder a click, forward slash YM. After we do that, we'll see the Dow Jones present itself and we will give it a click and we are all set. It's a nice market to be involved with and I find it quite a lot of fun myself. And if you think you have what it takes to master the market, make sure you check out our Gauntlet Mini and provide some very valuable opportunities for those that have what it takes. But without further ado, let's dive on into it. Chances are, at some point or another, you've listened to some financial market news broadcast. And the chances are even higher that if you have listened to a financial news broadcast that you've heard somebody mention futures, futures trading that is, and or mention the Dow Jones. Today, we're going to be diving into the Dow Jones futures market and how we can get started with that. First things first, let's talk about what the Dow Jones is as well as what Dow Jones futures are. So when I say Dow Jones, that is short for Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see that down here, and it can be shortened even further with DJIA, and that's commonly how you're going to see it if you look up at your TV screen. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is an index that tracks 30 large publicly owned blue chip companies that are traded on the New York Stock Exchange as well as the NASDAQ. The Dow Jones was named after Charles Dow, who created the index somewhere back in 1896 with his business partner, Edward Jones. Traders often refer to the Dow Jones Industrial Average just short as the Dow, and it's one of the oldest single most watched indices in the world. To us as traders, the Dow Jones is a collection of blue chip companies with consistently stable earnings. And some of the companies that the Dow Jones include, to give you an idea, would be things like Walt Disney, ExxonMobil, and Microsoft. Some powerhouse companies out there that we all generally consider to be quote-unquote reliable in our eyes. When the market is up today, is what the TV tells us, a lot of times what they're referring to is the state of something like the Dow Jones, if not the Dow Jones itself. The Dow Jones can be viewed as a strength symbol of the U.S. economy. The only thing older than the Dow Jones industrial average in regards to indexes would be the Dow Jones transportation average, which has 20 transportation stocks, such as railroad and trucking companies. The Dow Jones industrial average itself was designed to serve as a proxy for the broader U.S. economy instead of being based solely on trucking and railroad transportation. When the Dow Jones initially launched, it included only 12 companies that were almost purely industrial in nature. But as the economy changes over time continuously, so does the composition of the index. And this is valuable to us as traders because we want to stay with something that is able to keep up with the times and not stay on something that was purely based on something more archaic like the railroad industry. Not saying anything bad about the railroad industry, but I think you get where I'm going there. Now that we understand what the Dow Jones is, let's talk about what Dow Jones futures are. So a futures contract is a legally binding agreement between two parties to exchange money or assets at a future date based on the price of an underlying index. The Dow Jones futures contract tracks the spot price of the Dow Jones industrial average. So the two parties in a futures contract are basically betting on where the Dow Jones Industrial Average will trade on a specified day in the future. This is known as the final settlement date. If we were looking to speculate on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, then trading Dow Jones futures would be a good place to start. So this is the way the trading works. When two parties agree to trade a Dow Jones future contract, one party is always betting that the market is going to fall, while the other party is betting that the market is going to rise. You always need both of these together. 
When the final settlement date arrives, whoever made the wrong bet is obligated to pay the other party based on the value of the Dow. So let's use this real chart, for example, of the historical data of the Dow going back quite a few years. Let's say that we were betting that the Dow Jones was going to rise somewhere around, you know, 1968. Well, had we done that, we would be looking pretty darn good considering in modern times the Dow has risen quite ridiculously to say the least. So simply put, the person buying the futures contract makes money if the index value increases. Whereas the party that is selling the futures contract makes money when the index decreases in value. So the trade is going to be settled in cash ultimately because you can't actually provide a Dow Jones to somebody. I can't hand you a Dow Jones because it's an index. It's a basket of stocks. So other futures contracts might be settled with physical delivery, but the Dow Jones industrial average is going to be an exception to that. Let's imagine another example. We'll say that we are going to short a Dow Jones futures contract, which means we want the price of the Dow Jones to fall. We'll say that the DJIA has a value of 20,000 for a nice round number, easy to remember. And we'll say that the standard contract size is going to be $10 times that, which it actually is. So on the final settlement day, we'll say that the DJIA is trading at 20,400, meaning it went up 400 points instead of going down 400 points. And remember, we wanted it to go down, but that's not what happened. Unfortunately, it went up. So what happened to us? Well, if it went up 400 points and we're trading at $10 a point, that means simply if we multiply 400 by 10, then we have $4,000 that we now owe the other party. If it went the other way around and it did drop like we wanted it to, and it dropped 400 points, then guess what? We would have $4,000 in our pocket. Make sense? Now for some tasty choices. Tasty choices regarding which Dow Jones futures contract we choose to trade because we do have some options here. We have the original, the old school DJA futures contract, which is going to be ZD as a ticker symbol if you are looking for it. Then we have the E-mini Dow futures contract, which is my personal favorite. So because of that, we're going to put a nice little star over here because why not? And this is going to be YM. We, we showed you how to pull this one up at the beginning of the video if you were there for it. And then we have the big Dow DJA futures contract, which is going to be DD. And that's not the DD that makes donuts, but that is DD for the big Dow Jones futures contract. Then we have the micro E-mini DJIA futures contract, which is going to be a smaller variation of my personal favorite. And that is MYM instead of just YM. Now we're going to move over to some of the contract specifications for those tasty choices that we just discussed. And considering that the first tasty choice was the original chicken sandwich, I mean the original Dow Jones, the symbol is going to be ZD and that's where we're going to start. So ZD is how we're going to find the original DJIA futures contract. And the contract size is going to be $10 times the DJIA. This is arguably the most important thing on this entire sheet. There is more information regarding uh, termination of trading and settlement methods that I do have cut off here because it's frankly incredibly boring and going to be very similar with all of these contracts. And if you are interested, please make sure that you just go over to our blog post where I have all of this information for you in full so you can check out all of this stuff and you don't have to worry about trying to remember all of that stuff. It's not overly important. But this, this stuff here, this is the important stuff. The ticker symbol as well as the contract size. So $10 times the DJA is the ratio at which the DJIA regular futures contract trades. And this brings us back to our original example that we were talking about where if the Dow Jones moved 400 points and it went 400 points in our favor, then that means 10 times 400 means we made $4,000. If it went against us, then we lost $4,000. Next comes my personal favorite, and that is the E-mini Dow Jones futures contract. And that's because this offers the lowest amount of leverage and has a contract size of only $5 multiplying the Dow Jones average. So half of what we were just looking at. So that means if the Dow Jones closes at $25,000, 
the contract value would amount to $125,000 because $25,000 times five is what that means. And obviously each point of movement is gonna be worth $5 instead of $10, each point of movement of change that is. So once again, this is the E-mini DAO, very, very popular and my personal favorite. I strongly recommend you check it out. And if you are looking for it, you're just gonna look for the ticker symbol of YM. Next comes the big DAO. And, and appropriately, I made sure that we had a big 25 here because the contract size here is going to be 25 times the Dow Jones industrial average. That means $25 a point. Huge moves here. This contract offers the highest leverage with this $25 multiplier. If you want it big, the big DAO is the one you want. And last, but certainly not least, and definitely not the oldest, the Micro was the most recent addition. In May of 2019, the CME launched the Micro E-Mini, which is a very nice way for people with a smaller amount of capital to take advantage of trading the DJIA index. Because as you can see, our contract size here is only going to be 50 cents times the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So we have a tick value of 50 cents, meaning it's much cheaper for us to get involved here, which is good news for some, for sure. The concept of getting started trading Dow Jones futures is relatively simple. If we just take a look at these steps, we can see exactly how it works. The first thing we need to do is find a broker that suits us. We want to make sure that we are with someone that makes us happy and has ideals that align with ours and has other things that we might be interested in as well. Then the second thing we need to do is open an account, obviously. We found the one we want, we open an account. That's what we gotta get going. Now to open an account, some brokers require a deposit, others do not. Uh, but that brings us to step number three. Once we open our account, that doesn't mean we're just gonna dive into live trading. The first thing we wanna do is test our strategy on a simulation account. Now, once again, some brokers offer these for free with no deposit required, and others will require that we deposit live money even if we wanna just simply trade with paper money. Then number four is going to be deposit funds if we didn't do it already, and that's when we get to finally start trading live, and that is after we have already practiced on our sim account. And then finally, number five, we are going to execute the appropriate trade, either short or long. If we think the market's gonna fall, we're going short. If we think the market's gonna rise, then we're going long. And this is obviously gonna be based around our trading strategy that we practice once again on the SIM account ahead of time. That is how we're gonna get started trading, and that is exactly what we're going to do in the most simplistic sense. Naturally, if we open a position, we also need to know how to close out a position. And closing a position just simply means that we are entering an opposite trade to close an existing position. So let's say that we opened a trade by buying 10 E-mini Dow futures contracts, which is my personal favorite. To close the position, we would need to sell those contracts before the expiration date. And the same idea, if we open our position by selling five contracts short, then we would need to buy five contracts to close the position. Remember, it's always going to be an equal and opposite action to close our position out. That's all it comes down to. And when we close the position, that is going to be based on whether or not we decide that we are satisfied with our profits or are protecting ourselves from further losses. In conclusion, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a powerhouse of an index with extreme liquidity due to the fact that it's based on some of the most staple companies in the United States today. It's been around for quite a while, only being passed by the Transportation Index, which was created by Charles Dow himself. There's a lot of value in understanding the Dow Jones market, as well as viewing the overall health of the American economy, as well as using it as a tool to potentially create income off of trading. But if you think you do have what it takes to trade, make sure you check out our Gauntlet Mini because it is just waiting for you to prove what you've got. But until next time, folks, please click the like and subscribe button down below, and I will see you soon. Cheers, everybody. Over and out.